Hi guys, hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to our series of Azure Active Directory. And in this video, we are going to check how we can use OAuth 2.0 authorization code flow with the help of Postman app to access Microsoft Graph API, which is protected by Azure AD. So the entire agenda of this video will be first of all knowing what is OAuth 2.0 authorization code flow which endpoints are used from Azure AD perspective and how to set up Postman app with which we will be requesting a specific access token. And then we will be using that access token to get the details from Microsoft Graph API. Now there are certain prerequisites which I would recommend you guys to do. The first one is you should complete the OAuth series it has three videos and the last thing that I covered was authorization grant just to get insights that why OAuth has been named as authorization protocol and then if possible watch the SaaS playlist as well because over there I have discussed about service principle object and application object I will be using them as a reference in this video and the third section is you must know what kind of endpoints are used by Azure AD and what is their purpose okay so if you talk about OAuth 2.0 protocol there are four different type of flows which are available the first one is authorization code grant flow then you have client credential flow you have resource owner password flow and you have implicit flow so in this particular video we are going to talk about authorization code grant flow now, there is one thing which is very simple and which we all know that OAuth 2.0 or OpenID Connect, both of these protocols wherein the authorization layer is being separated from authentication layer, these are used to access resources that are protected by Azure AD. And in our case, the protected resource that we are going to access will be Microsoft Graph. So think about a scenario wherein you are developing an application and that has to be accessed by a user that exists in conceptswork.com. Now, there will be a specific authorized endpoint and token endpoint that belongs to Azure AD of conceptswork.com. And in order to check that, what you can do is you can go to the app registration section of the directory and then click on endpoints now i have covered all these details which are relative to endpoints in a lot more detail and that's available for our membership program so if you want you can join our channel and get access to azure ad advanced troubleshooting videos as well so as of now there will be two endpoints of conceptswork.com directory that will be used in OAuth 2.0 authorization code flow. And the first one will be authorized endpoint and the other one will be token endpoint. Now think about a scenario wherein as a user, I'm signing in to application.com or I'm navigating to application.com. The first step is this request will land to my application server where the application is hosted. Now it's a logic that has to be built on the application wherein I have to check whether the user is authenticated or not. If the user is not authenticated, I will send a 401 and I will redirect the user's browser to an endpoint of a specific Azure AD or to a specific endpoint that belongs to conceptswork.com Azure Active Directory. In this case, the first request has to reach the authorized endpoint. Now, there is a specific structure on which the request has to be defined. So if you will see, the first section here is defining the endpoint. I am using v2.0 endpoint. The next section is client ID, wherein this value should be present or should be associated with one of the application object or one of the service principle object that exists in Azure Active Directory of conceptswork.com. Now, if you guys will read some more information related to the endpoints for 
v2.0 endpoints scopes are mandatory so what i'm doing is i'm also mentioning a scope that the resource or the kind of api that i'm going to access will be graph.microsoft.com and user.v that you see here is a permission okay now once this request which is a proper structured request has been received by authorized endpoint user will be prompted for the consent to be accepted now this will happen because the authorized endpoint will ask the user to type in the credential once the credentials are verified user will be presented with a consent prompt and once that consent is approved by user a code will be sent to your application now what your application has to do is to use this code and then send a request again a proper structured request and this time it will be a post request to the token endpoint and what your application has to mention is the code which it has received from azure ad authorized endpoint and this time while forwarding the request it also has to mention the client secret now once the token endpoint will process this request a proper structured request the access token will be given to the application and then this access token can be used to access a particular set of information with the help of the protected api that you want to access so this is how the oauth 2.0 authorization code flow works in a nutshell and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to switch to my browser where i can show you guys from where you can download the postman app so all you have to do is you have to go to postman.com forward slash downloads and the moment you will click on download you can choose any one of these version depending upon your machine and you can get the postman downloaded now there is a lot of work when it comes to application configuration that has to be done before you can do all this testing so i will quickly show you guys the application that i have created and what kind of permissions i have given to that particular application so as of now there is an application which i have registered and i have named it as auth hyphen auth code flow and i have not made any specific changes when it comes to permissions that means when you add an application a default permission is granted to that particular application and that's exactly what it is as of now i have not made any manual change apart from creating a particular secret that's the only change that i have done from azure ad perspective now once you have downloaded postman and once you will launch postman for the very first time this is the console that you will get okay now all you have to do is you have to click on new and from here select this option which says request now the moment you will click on request you can name this particular request depending upon the query that you're going to do so likewise i'm going to check get user information so i will name it as get user info now if you want you can have a collection of requests since i'm going to use microsoft graph for this i will name it as microsoft graph okay and now i'm just going to click on save to microsoft graph okay now as of now if i try to access any information that's moreover related to let's say microsoft graph as you can see this is a specific endpoint that i'm accessing as of now which will just show me the attributes that belongs to my user object but as you can see what i'm getting as of now is access token is empty that means this get request that i'm making as of now there is no access token available so now think about a scenario wherein your application vendor has contacted you and said that i need a specific client id and client secret and i will be using authorization code flow since i'm using oauth 2.0 now before giving him client id and client secret you can do all this testing on your side 
and then provide all those details. This is from admin perspective. Now let's think about from a developer perspective. You, you have received a client ID and a client secret, but before you implement that in your application, you can do the testing from Postman app itself by providing some set of information. Now, if I click on authorization and if I select auth 2.0, as you can see, I'm getting an option of get new access token. Now, if you have previously requested any access token that will get listed over here. So what I'll do is I will delete all the old tokens and then this is how it will look like on your site since it will be the first request that you will be doing to get a new access token. OK, so as of now, what I have done is I have just selected a specific endpoint of Microsoft Graph that needs to be accessed with a proper access token. But since my request didn't have the access token, I got this particular error. Now, what I'll do is I'll click on get new access token. Now, in the callback URL, what you have to mention is one of the redirect URI that you have mentioned while registering the application. So if you'll go to the authentication section, as you can see, I have placed the same value, which is localhost, and it is there on my postman as well. Now, what I have selected is V2.0 endpoints, the same authorize as well as token endpoints. Okay. In the client ID, it has the value of my application ID that can be found on your portal itself. So as you can see, this is the same value which I have mentioned in the postman and then it has my client secret. Now here is the scope that I'm going to use to access a particular information on Microsoft Graph. I will be sharing an article in the description from where you can find the list of all the scopes that can be used. Now last and the most important thing that you have to make sure is correct is the kind of grant type that's available here. Now here, make sure you have selected authorization code when you are using OAuth 2.0 authorization code flow. Now the moment I will click on request token, I will be redirected to a browser wherein I have to enter my username and password. Now, since I've already signed in with this username and password before or with this user object, I got directly the consent prompt. But just to show you guys how the experience will be, let me just clear this particular session. So I'll just go to the logout endpoint and hopefully this should get signed out as you can see. Now I'll replace this again with my appropriate endpoint and now I'm going to click on request token. So as you can see, I'm getting now the prompt wherein I have to select a user object and I have to sign in. So what I'll do is I will not choose any of these accounts. Let me choose a new account altogether, which is SSO at the rate concepts work.com. And then I'll click on next. And then I'm going to type in my password and I should get a consent prompt. Now this is coming because the default permission is already available for this particular application which is user.read and that is the same set of information which i have mentioned in my scope as well so now what i'll do is i'll click on accept and hopefully the next prompt will be the access token prompt and as you can see i'm getting an access token now this access token can be used to access my information that means the account which is SSO. So now if I go to the get request and if I'll click on send, as you can see, I am getting the information from graph. Now as of now it's V1.0 which is mentioned over here. If you want to have detailed information, what you can do is you can type beta over here and then you'll get more set of attributes associated with a particular user object now there is one more thing uh, you know which can be tested from here and that is different kind of information that you want to access now let's say as of now i have only requested the access for my particular account with the scope user.read now for whichever service you are working be it identity protection be it 
let's say office 365 all you have to make sure you are mentioning the exact scope and then you are requesting a proper access token so now this is how you can have a postman app checking the oauth 2.0 authorization code grant flow so let's talk about a quick summary of what all we have discussed we have discussed about what is oauth authorization code flow we have discussed about different endpoints which are used how to set a postman for requesting an access token and then using it with microsoft graph api in the next video we are going to talk about what is oauth client credential flow so if you guys have learned something new please feel free to subscribe if you think that this channel is helping you to learn something new please go ahead and share this channel with your technical community thank you so much thanks for your time